The government is planning to introduce a system of national health insurance, or the NHI, but there are three core problems with it, and fortunately an overriding solution which we could use instead to address our health needs. And to start with the first problem is that the NHI will do nothing to overcome the weaknesses in the public health care sector. South Africa currently spends about 4% of GDP on public health care which is quite a high proportion, especially compared to other emergent markets. But we get very little bang for our health care buck. And you can see that in the fact, for example, that of all our public clinics and hospitals, only 16% are able to comply with basic norms and standards, are able to ensure that they have medicines available when they're needed, are able to comply with basic, basic standards of hygiene, and the underlying reasons are not so much a lack of money as rather poor management of those clinics and hospitals, which is compounded by great inefficiency in the provincial health departments, which are supposed to supply them with medicines, nurses, and so on. And so we have these very poor health care outcomes and a lack of accountability which is part of the management problem, part of the reason why, despite the money, the problems continue. If we look to the second core issue with the NHI, that concerns the private health care system. And we have an excellent private health care system to which about 30% of South Africans have access um, through medical scheme membership, through primary health insurance products and the like. But the government has made it very difficult for more people to join medical aids because for years its regulations have been pushing up the costs of medical scheme membership. In addition, just two years ago, the government prohibited a low-cost medical scheme which the Council for Medical Schemes wanted to bring in, which would have extended cover to 15 million more people, which would have cost about 200 rand a month per person. And why is the government doing this? In essence, because it wants to put an end to medical schemes altogether through the NHI. And so the health minister, Dr. Aaron Mozzaledi, has made it clear that the number of, health, of, of medical schemes is to be brought down. And that when the NHI is finally introduced in 2025, any medical schemes that still remain will be folded into the state's plan, which is the NHI. So effectively, instead of having 82 medical schemes now, we will end with one state monopoly, the NHI fund. So through the NHI, we will come to a state monopoly in healthcare, just as we have a state monopoly in the provision of electricity, and it's likely to be just as ineffective as ESCOM is. If we look to the third problem, it's that the NHI is likely to be highly inefficient, it's likely to be corrupt, and it's completely unaffordable. On inefficiency, the NHI will need an army of bureaucrats. Imagine a medical aid which has to cater for the needs of 56 million South Africans, whereas Discovery Health, the biggest private one, has fewer than 3 million members. We'll need a huge number of officials to run it, and they're unlikely to be any more efficient than the officials we already have. Secondly, because there will be billions of rands in the NHA fund. This will be a magnet to tenderpreneurs, including people such as the Gupta family. And we are likely to find that much of the procurement is tainted by fraud, corruption, inflated prices at the least. And thirdly, the NHI fund is completely unaffordable. It's likely that when it starts in 2025, it will cost 665 billion rand. That's about 13% of what GDP is likely to be at that time. But we also have to look to the future. After 15 years of the NHI on current escalation in health prices, it's likely to cost more than 2 trillion rand, and that would be 30% of what GDP is likely to be then. We cannot afford it. And that is what the Davis Tax Committee has also recently said, and saying that the NHI will be unsustainable unless we have much faster economic growth. We should not embark on it with our present low levels of growth, with our very small tax base, 
and with a huge mountain of public debt that we already have. But fortunately, there is a solution. There's a better way in which we can overcome and address our health needs. And in essence, we need to fix the public, the public health care system, which can be done through effective private-public partnerships. Secondly, we need to give the poor access to the benefits of private health care, especially at the primary level. And we can do that by allowing the low-cost medical schemes the government has prohibited. And by giving the poor, for example, tax-funded health vouchers so that they can buy membership of these schemes and also can buy the low-cost primary health insurance policies, which are also cheap. Thirdly, we need to make sure that we have a greater supply of healthcare professionals to meet the demands of the population. So again, we need to remove some of the regulatory barriers. The government at the moment prevents the private sector from training doctors and specialists. We should remove that regulation and encourage the private sector to do that training, which is well equipped to do. We should also allow, encourage the private sector, in fact, to establish many more day hospitals, private clinics and so on to increase the supply of health facilities. What we need is a rapidly growing economy and millions of more people in jobs so that they can earn their own income and make their own choices about what healthcare they want. Instead of under the NHI, well, they will have to wait endlessly for the state to provide.